Today, I want to speak to you from a wonderful verse from the Old Testament. Some of you are going to find this verse familiar. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, which says simply this. So he answered and said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. There was a building project building a new temple some 70 years after the Babylonians destroyed Solomon's temple. And that building project had stalled for years and years. Zerubbabel was the civic leader of Jerusalem, and he had responsibility to finish the work of rebuilding the temple, and he needed encouragement to carry on the work. God's word to him came simply and powerfully. Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit was what the Lord had to say. In the vision of Zechariah chapter 3, God spoke to Zerubbabel about the issue of purity. But purity alone is not enough to accomplish the work of God. The work of God needs resources and not the resources of human might or power. The idea behind the word might in Zechariah 4.6 focuses on collective strength. It's the resources of a group or an army. The word power in this verse focuses on individual strength. So it's as if God says this, it's not by the resources of many or by one, but by my spirit. It's not going to be your cleverness, your ability, or your physical strength that the temple is going to be rebuilt, but it's going to happen by the spirit of God. The necessary resource for God's work is, is the Holy Spirit, and God promised Zerubbabel a rich resource in the Spirit of God to accomplish that work. When we trust in our own resources, whether they're small or great, in the eyes of man, then we don't really enjoy the full supply of the Spirit. Now, this great statement is connected to an earlier vision in the chapter, the vision of the olive trees and the lampstands supplied by oil that came right from the olive trees. We see that God wanted Zerubbabel to know that the Holy Spirit would continually supply his need. And just as the oil trees in the vision continually supplied oil to the lamps on the lampstand, again, this was a vision that God gave Zechariah. God wants his supply and our reliance on the Holy Spirit to be continual. When we think about oil, it's a good representation of the Holy Spirit. Oil lubricates when it's used for that purpose. There's little friction and wear among those who are lubricated by the Spirit of God. Oil heals, and it was used as a medicinal treatment in biblical times. The Spirit of God brings healing and restoration. Oil lights when it's burned in a lamp. Where the Spirit of God is, there's light. Oil warms when it's used as fuel for a flame. Where the Spirit of God is, there's warmth and comfort. Oil invigorates when it's used to massage. The Holy Spirit invigorates us for his servant. Oil adorns when it's used as a perfume. The Holy Spirit adorns us and makes us more pleasant to be around. And oil polishes when it's used to shine metal. The Holy Spirit wipes away our grime and he smooths out our rough edges. What our work for the Lord needs is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit works with and through human energy and initiative, but it's possible to have all the energy and and initiative, but none of the Spirit. Charles Spurgeon explained it this way. You get up plans and say, now if the church were altered a little bit, it would go on better. You think that if there were different ministers or different church order or different this, then it would all be well. No, dear friends. It is not there that the mistake lies. It's that we lack more of the Spirit. Is that what you want more of? Then ask for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon your life and determine that it will not be my bite, nor be by power, but by God's Spirit, just as the Lord has said. I pray that today your life would be fulfilled and filled by God's Spirit. And I pray that it's real for you today.